Math 31, welcome to example two. Let's see how far we can expand these logarithms. We're gonna assume all variables represent positive real numbers and neither of the bases in this problem will be equal to one. All right, so taking a look at this, this is a pretty intense argument. If you need to, you can put parentheses around this. But if you look, I have a quotient first and foremost, right? I have a, a, a ratio, a fraction. And that numerator, just inside the numerator, I can see products because I have r times s squared times t. And on the denominator, I also have a product. And inside those products, I can also see certain terms have powers. So I've got three terms with powers. So just in saying that out loud, I heard that I had a quotient, I had a product, and I had a pro uh, power. So I'm going to be using all three of these properties in just this one problem. And like I said, first and foremost, I have a quotient, all right? I have a numerator and a denominator, so I'm gonna use the quotient rule or the quotient property before I do anything here. So if we revisit our quotient property, it says that when you have the logarithm of a quotient, you do the log of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator. And when I move this way along that equation, I'm expanding. I'm going from one logarithm to two logarithms. So let's expand. This will give me log base b of r s squared t minus log base b of u cubed v to the fifth. Now you don't have to put parentheses around that exponent, I mean, sorry, that argument. It's up to you if you want to. The argument is a monomial, so it doesn't technically need parentheses, but you're more than welcome to do that if it helps you keep the problem clearer. All right, so from here, taking a look at this argument now, I have my product, right? I have r times s squared times t. I also have a product here. I have u cubed times v to the fifth, and the rule for products, at least the product property, is when you have the log of a product, you add those individual logarithms. So I'm going to expand this logarithm, and I'm gonna expand the second logarithm, and I'm gonna put an, a very intentional error. So as I write this next line out, see if you can spot my error. So I will have log base b of r plus log base b of s squared plus log base b of t minus log base b of u cubed plus log base b of v to the fifth. So take a look at what I've written. There's a very, like I said, very intentional error in there. And it's in this second expansion, okay? So if you can spot it, great. And if you can't, let's have a chat about it. This subtraction sign gets applied not only to the u cubed term, but to the v to the fifth term. Because when I expand this logarithm using the product property, you have to remember there's a grouping symbol around that expansion. So I need to distribute this negative not just to the u cubed term, but also to the v to the fifth term. So really I have log base b of r plus log base b of s squared plus log base b of t minus log base b of u cubed minus log base b of v to the fifth. So be careful in your expansion in that you're remembering to distribute that negative to every term on the denominator. So basically every term in your denominator should be subtracted because that's what we have with the quotient property. We subtract the logarithm of the denominator. All right, I'm almost done but I still have these powers here, right? I have s squared, I have u cubed, and I have v to the fifth. So I'm gonna apply the power property, and the power property says, hey, whatever those exponents are, you can bring them down in front of the logarithm as multiplication. So let's try that. I will leave this as log base b of r. This will be plus two times log base b of s. I don't have to do anything to the log base b of t. I will bring the three out in front, so I will have minus three log base b of u, and then I will have minus five log base b of v. So that is ultimately what I would have for my expansion. And you can see it is quite an expansion. 
right? I had one logarithm here, and yes, the argument was pretty convoluted, and then I expanded that to five much simpler logarithms, or I should say five logarithms with simpler arguments, right? We just had r, s, t, u, and v. And there's nothing I can do to simplify these terms because r is not a power of b, s is not a power of b, t is not a power of b, u is not a power of b, and v is not a power of b. All right, now that's how we expand it. I also could have asked this question in reverse order. I could have given you this expression and asked you to simplify it to that expression. So we can always expand and we can always simplify. But at least for examples one and two, we're expanding. All right, so I'm gonna scooch this up and let's take a look at part B. All right, so part B is giving us this whole log base A of the fifth root of A cubed. So as I go to expand this, I'm gonna rewrite my power, my, excuse me, my radical with a rational exponent. And we talked about this on the previous page. When you have the nth root of x to the m, it's the x, um, excuse me, it's x to the m over n power. So let's play this out with this example. I have the fifth root of a cubed. So this will be log base a, all right, so this will be a. Again, the index becomes your denominator. And this exponent here becomes your numerator. All right, now you have a couple of ways to solve this. I'm going to do it one way over here, and then I'm going to just show you the direct way. Like maybe you're seeing the answer right now, and I, and I don't mean this in a braggy way. Like I could see the answer right now. If you're there, awesome. And if you're not, I'm going to show you how you get there. All right, so if I look at my argument, if you don't see the answer right away, if you look at your argument, your argument is a power. Okay? So if I have a power, I can apply the power property, which says bring that exponent down in front of the logarithm as multiplication. So let me go ahead and do that. So this will become 3 fifths times log base A of A. And maybe this is now ringing a bell. If it didn't ring a bell here, maybe you're seeing it at this point. What is log base A of A? Well, we have a property for that. Yes, it's with a different letter, but whenever you have log base B of B, the only thing that survives is that exponent of one. So when I have log base A of A to the first power, the base of my log and the base of my power are the same, so the only thing that makes it out of there is the exponent, and 3 fifths times one is just 3 fifths, okay? Now, how I could have seen it up front is using the same idea. Look, the base of your logarithm and the base of your power are the same, so really, you could have just canceled these. You could have said, well, this is log base A, A to the 3 fifths, but this and this canceled. The only thing that survives is the exponent. So it just depends on how you see it, right? If you could see it directly there, then get, cut to the chase and just say the answer is 3 fifths. If you can't quite see it, if you need to bring that exponent down in front, that's fine too. It doesn't take that much longer. And really, we just want you to get to the right answer. All right. Let's take a look at part C. All right, it looks pretty intimidating. Yeah, but let's see if we can stare this one down. All right, so first and foremost, I have a radical, right? And I have the mth root. So let's do this. This is gonna become log base A of, all right, I have r cubed s squared over t to the fourth to the one over m power because I'm just gonna pretend this is all to the first power. I can distribute the one over m through, that's totally fine, okay? At this point, there's gonna be a couple of ways to solve this. So I could distribute the one over m to the r cubed, I could do a power times a power, multiply those exponents. I could distribute the s squared, or the one over m to the s squared, and the one over m to the t to the fourth. You can distribute this exponent as long as there's just multiplication or division inside this grouping symbol. But what I wanna do is just do it slightly different. And here's what I mean by that. I wanna apply the power property first. So it says, if you have m raised to the n, go ahead and drop that exponent down in front as multiplication. So what I wanna do is take this exponent down in front as multiplication. So I'm gonna rework this as one over m times log base a of r cubed s squared t to the fourth. All right, I'll keep this out here. I'm not gonna forget it, but now let's start unpacking this. I've got a quotient. 
So let's use the quotient rule. I don't want to forget my 1 over m, but the quotient rule says take the log of the numerator and subtract out the log of the denominator. Okay, and then I see that my numerator has a product in it, so I'm going to apply the product property, which says go ahead and take the log of your product and expand it into a sum of logarithms. Oops, I just noticed I dropped the A here. Did you see it? There we go. Got it back in. All right. And then I can see that I can use the power property and bring each of these exponents down. So we will have 1 over m, and then I have 3 log base a of r plus 2 log base a of s minus 4 log base a of t. So that's all good. I'm looking, I can't simplify these anymore. r is not a power of a. S is not a power of A, T is not a power of A, but I, I can distribute that 1 over M now. So this will be 3 over M log base A of R plus 2 over M log base A of S minus 4 over M log base A of T. So when I take a look at that end answer, I can see that all of my arguments are pretty simple, right? Just R, S, T, I'm going to call it a day. All right, so with that, in examples one and two, we've really expanded our logarithms, right? We started with a single logarithm and ended with multiple logarithms. In the next few examples, we're gonna go the other way, where I give you multiple logarithms, and I want you to simplify down to one logarithm. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.